And now, from PAX TV Studio 611, your host, Richard Tom. Good evening, and welcome to It's a Miracle. You've probably heard the old saying, stop and smell the roses. Roughly translated, it means take time to enjoy the world while you can. Well, after seeing our first story tonight, you may want to stop and look at the roses as well. On October 9th, 1990, 30-year-old Renee Poyer was working as a senior maintenance electrician at a computer company near Eau Claire, Wisconsin, when a massive power outage hit the entire complex. It was left to Renee, his supervisor, and a co-worker, Steve Eichinger, to repair the problem. I had gone to work alone on one electrical box, and Renee and my supervisor had decided to start on another. Everyone believed that the power was off. But they were wrong. And in an instant, 100,000 volts of electricity would change Renee's life forever. Steve was working 300 feet away. All of a sudden, I heard a loud cracking and popping sound. Immediately, I knew something horrible had happened. I was very afraid going up there. Uh, I had butterflies in my stomach. I mean, my stomach sunk. I asked him immediately, are you okay? And he indicated then he could not see. The world was disappearing for Rene Poyer. He was going blind. And this cornea looks much like the right. Dr. James Redman, an ophthalmologist, was brought in to assess the damage. And now we'll take a look at your other eye. He did have a few small scratches on the surface of the cornea, small burns actually, and normally I would have expected those to clear up within perhaps a week or two, and likewise would have expected the vision to clear up also during that period of time on this side. I figured that the doctor knew what was going on, and that in a couple days I'd be back to work, and life would be back on track, but it didn't work out that way. Renee's vision did not return. Renee had us stumped in terms of what is the actual reason for the visual loss. We certainly could not explain it on the basis of a, a specific eye problem, so we were left with, is there some other area in the brain that's affected that we simply don't know enough about to make a determination. With no explanation for his blindness and little hope that his sight would return, Renee's life was turned upside down. In many ways, I was like a child. I went through a learning curve with everything I did. It was hard to walk. It was like, uh, the way I can describe it is it's like walking in a canoe. I do most of the cooking and I had to learn how to cook, which turned into disaster many times. It was very depressing. It was very lonely. It was very scary. It was, it was a horrible, horrible time. But the cruelest punishment of all was never being able to see his two young daughters. They would grow up without his ever experiencing a father's joy of watching them change. It was very difficult for me to accept the fact that I wouldn't be the person that taking care of my family. And I wouldn't be the one to see him smile. And I, We had no clue to what the future would bring. We did not know what he was supposed to do now, where he was supposed to work, if he was supposed to work. And we both knew that at you know, age 30, that he couldn't not do anything. He had to find something to do. But no matter how hard he tried, Renee was unable to hold down a steady job. And then, one day, 
something unexpected happened. Someone call 911, please, quickly. What's going on? I think this lady's had a heart attack. I know CPR. Can you help me get over there? I'm blind. Back of the door. She's right over here. Renee immediately went into action. I couldn't find a pulse, and I couldn't hear her breathe. There wasn't anybody else there that said they knew CPR, so I had to do it myself. Ten minutes later, paramedics arrived and rushed the victim to a hospital. The family of the woman invited Renee to visit her so that she could express her gratitude. I said, I'm the one that should be grateful here, not, not you. You made me feel like I'm worth something again. And it was the first time since my accident that I felt good about being me. Renee's life finally had meaning. And so in the years to follow, he trained to become a physical therapist assistant, eventually landing a job at Sacred Heart Hospital where he became friends with the chaplain, Father Klimek. My brother was a patient here in the rehab unit, and Renee worked with him very, very closely. Left foot and right foot. Left foot. And uh, so uh, right by his patience, Good and his encouragement. Patients were more determined than ever to try to become very independent. And then on May 23rd, 2000, Renee's patience and encouragement was repaid in a way he never expected. Oh my God. I got a, a severe headache. It was just a crushing headache, pounding. and it was followed by a brilliant light. And then I realized that the trees are moving. I can see the grass. Oh my God, I can see. And I ran down nine flights of steps and down a hall to the chapel. And I dropped to my knees and I started to thank God. Thank you. It was beautiful. <laughs> I opened the door, and there stood Renee, see, very, see. very excited. I said, what's the matter? He says, I can see, I can see. Father Clemick then walked me to the front door, and he says, Renee, go see what you've been missing. I laid down on my back on the grass, and I looked up, and I watched the clouds float by. I was very much overwhelmed by everything that had just happened. Rene rushed home to an empty house, and while he waited for his family to return, he took a moment to look through the family album. It was the first time in 10 years that he had seen the faces of the people he loved. But I was so happy that I could see them, and I was studying their faces, thinking in the back of my mind, if God would take my sight away now, I can't. I'd be happy because I could see him. Today, those who knew him during the years he was blind can offer only one explanation for Renee's sudden return to sight. We can call it a miracle. We can call it a special gift of God. But the beautiful thing of it, Renee has his eyesight. I know in talking with Renee that he views his vision return as a gift from God, and I'm inclined to agree with him because I certainly don't have any other explanation for why it suddenly improved. Get I love him more than words can say, and if there was anything I hoped for, for him, truly for him, it was to get his sight back. Oh, I've been given a second chance, and now I'm not gonna let a second slip by. I am going to be busy with my family busy with my friends, and I'm going to leave no stone unturned.